welcome back. Today we're going to do some more painting. Um, we're going to start off of course with the white base, but I really wanted to do something different and interesting that I haven't done before. So I'm going to try to make a stencil and I'm going to do sort of a craw pattern, but more in the style of this game I used to play called Starcraft. They have these little things called Zerglings and I kind of want to make it inspired on that. So I want to do a white base, um, get some purple and black and maybe some nice like bright green in there. But um, yeah, let's start with the white base. Okay, there's our base coat. Now we're just gonna go heat set it and then we'll start putting some, we're gonna start putting some more colors on there. Okay, now I wanna go ahead and put a brown kinda down here. I might just do the whole thing in brown over the white, um, see how it comes out. But I don't have the color brown, so we're gonna be mixing, oh, oh, oh there we go. We're gonna be mixing red and green together to make that brown, I might put a little bit of black in there to darken it up. We'll see how it how it looks. So let's mix it. Draw off the reducer. Me too. Now we're gonna mix these together. That's actually a really dark brown. Um, let's experiment. Let's put some white in here and see what it does. It's two drops of white. Yeah, and I mix that. I don't know what you would call that color exactly, but um, let's give it a try. That's almost, see it almost makes a purple. And I spray it. But, God, that is really close to, <laughs> oh, is that a frame? That is really close to a purple. But, again, we'll just see how it comes out. Let me finish it up. Now that we got that down, we're gonna, as always, heat set it, and then we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a nice purple. All right, now it's time to mix up some purple. And to do that, we're gonna be using red and blue together. And let's see what kind of purple we get. Four, five, as usual, I kinda do five drops for each one I'm mixing, just to give me a base idea. Oh. See what kind of kind of purple are we gonna get? Let's go ahead and put. Some reducer in there. That is a dark purple. Uh, Let's add some more red and see if that brightens it up a bit. So I really want a bright purple. Just 
So I find it a little more purpley. Comes out black on the camera for some reason. Hmm. Again, let's just drop in a drop of white and see if it brightens it up or not. Oh yeah, it does. That looks much better. Let's put one more drop of white in and it should make it a better looking purple. There we go. There we go. Now let's go ahead and start painting our bait. That came out to actually be kind of a dark purple, um, but we'll just roll with it. All right, as always, we're gonna heat set that and then we're gonna grab some duct tape and cut out our stencils. Okay, now to make our stencil, we're gonna use some duct tape that's folded over. And this is a tip I learned from a member over at the Brotherhood of Custom Crank ba Painting. Um, and we're gonna try it out, see how it works. So, the doesn't have to be very big. So we'll start here. I like it when it's a little squiggly. I really want to angle that back. All right, we're gonna get black in our gun and start painting this and well, I guess we'll just see how it comes out, whether or not I fuck it up or not. Let's go. Okay, uh, where did I put that stencil? Here it is. Let's go ahead and put that down. Right about there. We're going to use the lateral line on this crankbait to kind of tell us where it is. We're not actually painting on the bait, we're painting on the stencil. You're kind of using the overspray to get on there. Mm. Not a hundred percent happy with that, but let's keep going. Okay. Let's hit that again. There we go, I think it looks a little bit better. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side, since that one is still bare. I'm just gonna go ahead and heat set this black that's on here, so that way when I use it on the reverse side, it doesn't get all over the side of the bait. I'm gonna try to do this side a little bit lighter, not quite as heavy as I did on this side, and see if it makes any big difference in the books. Oh, shit. 
don't drop your airbrush. Pro tip of the day. I don't think I'd want to make him that close in the future. Well, that came fucked up, but whatever. There we go. Now we're going to take care of this top part in a different way. We'll see how it turns out. Now I want to connect the tops so it connects both sides, but instead of just doing a straight line like most people do, I want to give it a little point. So this is kind of more Zergling inspired. Now I forgot this damn line ties here. So we're going to do these three ones in the back first, and then I'm going to cut a slit in here so it can fit over the line tie, and we'll see how that works out. Um. And there's our back. I think it turned out okay. We'll see when we get a clear coat on it. But now we're actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna, actually let's put some black in the eye sockets. Okay, now we're gonna clean out our brush real fast and we're gonna go ahead and try to get a bright green made up. Okay, and just green and yellow should give us a bright green. Again, you don't need, you know, I mean the paints aren't expensive but they're not cheap. You don't need necessarily all the colors right away. You can get away with just the primary colors and just mix them together, experimenting. And it probably will make you a better painter to do it this way at the beginning. But, like I said, we're gonna mix this yellow and green. I'm gonna put a little more yellow in. So I want it to be nice and bright. And again, just a, like a drop of reducer. There we go, that brightens it up quite a bit. Pour this green into our gun. Okay, I actually kind of like the way that came out. So now we're gonna go ahead, and the thing I really wanted to color green was these eyes. I've never painted eyes. I don't know if it's even really a good idea. All right, so I've got those eyes colored. Now, I don't want to do just the eyes green. I kind of feel like it needs a little bit more. And I was thinking, well, what can I do to, uh, you know, give it a little bit more color, a little, just a little bit more. Um, and it's a very dark bait. And I really want to get this green, and I figure, since it's very inspired, I'm going to make another stencil of kind of like claw marks going on the side of it as if it had been attacked by another ling or a hydralisk or something. And um, we're going to make that real quick. Um, okay, now we got our little claw marks made. <laughs> now we have our little claw marks made. And again, they're in the duct tape. And we're just going to go ahead and put it on the side, kind of giving something similar to strike zone, I guess. We'll, we'll see how it turns out again. This is all experimental. Okay, and now we're going to get this other side, and I'm going to try to do it heavier. Again, one side will be done light, one side will be done heavy, and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, 
of course that was off camera. So there's those clone rocks on that side, and there's a lighter on the other side. Um, let me heat set this, and we'll put the eyes in, and then we'll clear coat it and see how it looks. Now I lost the first pair of eyes we made, so we're gonna make some more real quick. All right, we're gonna heat set this, put it on the bait, clear coat it, then you'll see kind of what it looks like. All right, and here is our finished bait. You can see where I got a thumbprint from the black from when I was doing the stencils. So be careful from that. Um, I guess make sure there's not too much black on there and heat set your stencil so you don't leave fingerprints on it. But I do like the eyes. I do like the way those claw marks came out on the side. And the gradient from this brownish color to that purple I like. And I'm decently, I'm decently pleased with the spine. It could be a little bit better, but I think for a first attempt at a cross stencil with that, I think it came out okay. That line tie again was kind of a problem. Um, I think it went okay. But yeah, that's my zergling. <laughs> It inspired a uh, craw pattern. I think I'll call it a craw rush. And yeah. Yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this kind of freestyling, you know, inspired designs, I guess you could say. Um, this one was a Zergling. If you have something else you want me to try that's kind of off the cuff or whatever, just let me know down in the comments below. If it's something I'm interested in, I'll give it a try. Again, it can be anything from a movie or, a, you know, a book, um, just a general idea. It could be anything at all. Let me know down below um, and I'll give it a try. Because again, I really enjoyed making this uh, StarCraft Zergling inspired craw. Um, I think it came out pretty good. Let me know what you think um, of how it came out below. If you want to see more videos, you can subscribe. And um, I'll see you next time.